This is our eighth computer session. And what we'll do now is we will take the data that we saved in the last computer session, our three-dimensional spatially variant lattice, we will mesh it, display it, and then save it to an STL file. And once we have the STL file, we can load it into Blender and manipulate it. And what we'll do on Blender is actually stack it vertically. So as usual, let's start by initializing MATLAB. We will close all open figure windows, clear the command window, and then the most important, clear all the variables for memory. Now we want to open a figure window. So we'll use the command figure. As usual, we will make the background color white. Then we will tell it we want to use normalized units. And this lets us create a figure window that goes full screen without having to know actually how large the screen is in terms of the number of pixels. We can just say 0011. Now let's run it, make sure everything's okay. Shouldn't get any errors and we have a full screen window with a white background. Okay. The first thing we need to do is load the data file that we saved last time. And the first step in that is to actually read the file. So we will say load SV lattice 3D, and we will load in SVLB, which is the three dimensional array containing zeros and ones, and then the resolution of that lattice that we saved. The next thing we'll want to do is calculate the grid for this lattice. Now, we could have saved all of the grid parameters to that svlattice 3D data file, but I don't like doing that. I like minimizing the number of variables that's passed from one section of code to the other. I think it makes it a little bit more robust. Uh, for example, let's say we also brought in big NX, big NY, and big NZ. It turns out we actually have redundant information now. We can determine the size of SV SVLB this way, NX and Y and Z equal size SVLB, instead of bringing in NX, NY, NZ. And anytime there's redundant information at an interface, there's the chance that they could be not consistent with each other. And so that's bad practice. So I always try to minimize the number of variables between sections of code. So at this point, we know the size of the lattice and we have the resolution in terms of DX2, DY2, DZ2, just for convenience. I'm gonna convert the resolution parameters and drop the two from them. And now I can create, uh, or I can calculate the physical size of the grid. So the physical size in X is the number of cells times the cell width. And the same thing for SY and SZ. We will create our axis vectors. And now we have our grid. Let's run this, make sure there's no errors. No errors, okay. So we're done this section of code, we have our grid. And now the business part of this where we actually mesh the lattice. So we're going to save this mesh as an STL file. And from what you saw last time, we essentially have one vertical unit cell. In the next computer session, when we load this into Blender, we will stack it and create a full three-dimensional lattice. It's more efficient to do it that way than to create a 3D lattice to begin with, although that is certainly an option. But in order for it to stack cleanly, we want the top and bottom meshes to look the same. So there's no staircasing or anything like that. So I think a good way to do that is to look at the zeros and ones in the top and bottom layer of cells in the grid, calculate a statistical average of those, and then copy that data over to the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom are exactly the same. So this section of code is force top and bottom of lattice 
to be the same because they are not necessarily the same right now. So I'm going to call that layer, the top and bottom layer, which will be the same. I'll call it S. SVLB1, that'll be the top, plus SVLB. Z, that'll be the bottom. And I divide by two. So we were calculating the statistical average. Then what I'll do is I'll overwrite SVLB at the first unit cell and SVLB at the last uh, layer of grid cells. I'll copy S over to that. Okay, now the top and the bottom of our lattice is exactly the same and will mesh the same and so it will stack very cleanly when we go into Blender. The next thing we want to do before we mesh is smooth the lattice. And this will get rid of meshing the staircasing that we have from, from this being on a Cartesian grid. So now we'll just go to SVL instead of SVLB. We'll use the built-in smooth 3 command. And we will smooth SVLB to get SVL. So SVL is still an array that goes from 0 to 1, but there will be some smoothing around the edges. Let's take a look at that. First of all, we'll run it, make sure there's no errors. And let's take a look at before and after. So we'll do two quick subplots. Uh, this is code we will erase in just a second. We'll need to calculate the middle of the grid. And we will image SC, XAYA, SVL. Do an axis equal tight color bar. Now it will come out being upside down. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's run this and make sure we can see it. Okay. And let's copy and paste. Let's display the original SVL. So SVLB will be on the left and SVL will be on the right. Let's go ahead and look at that. See how the lattice on the left is purely binary, just zeros and ones. What we've done is we smooth the edges a little bit so that when we mesh it, we get smooth edges. But we're talking about the same lattice, just one's been blurred slightly. Okay, so we will erase that code. We don't need it. We'll, we'll visualize the full three-dimensional mesh. Okay, so now we need to mesh the surface. And we'll do this in two steps. Remember we have the ISO surface and then ISO caps. So we'll use ISO surface. We will be meshing the smooth lattice with a threshold value of 0 0.5 because that's right in between 0 and 1. We also need to mesh the caps. And I'll call that FC and VC. Instead of ISO surface, it's ISO caps, but otherwise all the same input arguments. So we've now meshed the lattice, but we have two different sets of faces and vertices that we have to bring together. So our next step is to combine them. Combine faces and vertices. First thing are the vertices. And we will put in the, the original vertices. That's of the, the surface, but not on the caps and we'll follow that by the cap vertices. Then the faces. I'm sorry, we did this in the incorrect order here. We will stack the faces first, and we'll see why in a second. FC. So we've stacked the faces and the vertices. However, there's a problem. Remember what's in the faces array. We have integers in this array referring to the vertices. In the vertex arrays are the numbers like 1.379, they're actual positions. And there's a first vertex, a second vertex, third vertex, all the way up to tens of thousands of vertices. FC contains integers, and they are the, the, the array index inside VC of which vertices are composing the faces. So if there's an integer 1 in FC, it wants the first vertex. 
However, if we keep it that way, and there's an integer one here, it will actually grab the first in this original V because that's how we have it stacked. So what we need to do is add to FC here the length of V. So if there is an integer one, and let's say there's 10,000 vertices in this first V, then that integer one will be 10,001, and it will start referencing the first vertex inside VC. So all we have to do is just add to it the length of V. And that's it. Now we've combined our, our faces and vertices. And another thing that we really haven't been doing, if we have big data sets that we no longer need, we should clear them from memory. Uh, we haven't been doing that because our, our lattices and stuff, our data sets have been relatively small. But when you start generating very large lattices, which is probably more realistic, clear the big, big data sets when you don't need them anymore. So we'll clear FC and VC here. Probably not necessary, but we're doing it. Now we'll draw the mesh. Now before we, we drew these in two steps, we called ISO surface and then patch, ISO caps and then patch. But we just called those two and combined them so we can display this simply with one call to patch. We'll give it the faces and the vertices. And we'll give it a face color, the ugly MATLAB green. Let's view it from 10 degrees azimuth, 60 degrees elevation. Definitely axis equal tight. Give it some lighting and we'll, we'll render it with Fong and we'll give it a title Spatially Variant Lattice. And we'll say draw now because we're going to, our, our next line of code while short could take a long time and this will force the graphics to draw while it's working. Let's go ahead and run it, make sure we haven't made any mistakes. And there's our lattice. Now one thing cosmetically, I like looking at the mesh, the black lines here, but if you're generating a picture for a publication or to show off to somebody, and maybe you don't want those lines there, let's get rid of them. So go up here and we will say line style none. So it won't draw any lines. Let's see what this looks like. And so that looks more like a, a physical lattice and we're not really seeing the, the mesh. If I'm just viewing this for my own purposes, I probably wouldn't do this. I'd like to see the mesh. Uh, maybe I can see if something's going wrong, but personal taste. Very last thing, we're going to create the STL file. So we'll say save lattice to STL file. And what I like to do is, since sometimes for very large lattices this can take a while, we'll display a message, creating STL file. And we'll follow it with a draw now, or it may not display that text to the screen. So we'll use SVL CAD as we did before, svlattice3d.stl, and we'll give it the faces and the vertices. So let's go ahead and run this. I believe this lattice takes on the order of one or two minutes to save. So we'll run it, I'll pause the video, and I'll unpause it after it finishes saving. So here we go. The 3D lattice comes up pretty quickly. And I will now pause the video until it's done. Okay, so we'll close this figure window and we can see that we have created our STL file. So at this point, you have seen all of the MATLAB code for generating spatially variant lattices in two dimensions and three dimensions. The only thing yet we have to do in the next computer session is to load this into Blender, stack it, and play with it and look at it. So that's it for this session.